Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 6, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about a new NASA study that shows that portions of the Arctic, particularly Alaska, are becoming more active as it relates to the carbon cycle lands in the region are transforming and producing more atmospheric carbon and moving carbon around the earth system at a more rapid rate but before i do i i want to call your attention to the five stages of climate change denial as they are identified by katherine hayhoe and there are a number of other stages if you want to look at all the various forms of climate change denial, I recommend you take a look at Skeptical Science's climate change denial statements page. But, but this, is a, this is a pretty good summary by Kat, Catherine Hayhoe here. She's saying that the stages of denial are, one, it's not happening, or we can't tell that it is. Two, it's not us, or we don't know if it is. Three, it's not bad. Four, it's too expensive to fix. And five, it's too late. You should have warned us earlier. Now, it's worth noting that the number five form of climate change denial, which I which I call doomerism, has been popping up a lot lately as it relates to human-caused climate change, and as it becomes more obvious that the impacts of human-caused climate change are starting to be realized. So don't fall into the trap of number five falling into doomerism as we talk about activated carbon cycles, which admittedly can, can be a bit concerning. Now I'd like to add some more context and I'm going to show you an example of human fossil fuel emissions to give you an idea of the context of the changes that we are seeing in the Arctic. And globally, fossil fuel-based emissions produce about 10 billion tons of atmospheric carbon every year. Now, if you change that, if you convert that into CO2 or methane, there's added molecular weight because you're adding other molecules. But if you're just looking at the carbon portion of those molecules, you're looking at about 10 billion tons per year. Now, extrapolating that over the course of a century, and you end up with about 1,000 billion additional tons in the Earth's atmosphere over a century. But the problem is, is that fossil fuel reserves are so large that if the present rate of economic growth is, is attached to fossil fuel burning and energy is a, is a primary fuel for economic growth, then the rate of global carbon emissions increases such that you can end up with well more than an, an extra 1,000 billion tons of carbon emission over this century. You could get up to 1,500 billion tons or 2,000 billion tons or in like the worst case, well over an additional 2,000 billion tons. So, so this is, is a very serious issue. Our ability to dig carbon up out of the ground and burn it is, is the primary driver of human-caused climate change and it is the primary source of potential future emissions. Even if you're looking at feedbacks from the Earth system. This one is the elephant in the room. Now, just to add another piece of context. So this is CO2 flux into the Earth's atmosphere. And as you can see in the gray area, most of it is coming from fossil fuels. And some of it is coming from land use change, much smaller portion. And this green area is what we call the land sink. And if you lose a chunk of the land sink, then then you end up with more net flux of CO2 into the atmosphere. And that's, that's where the concern in the Arctic and in other regions where you're losing forests or, or you're converting uh, permafrost to, to peatlands, or if you're producing more wildfires around the surface of the earth, that, that's, that's a concern is that the land sink, sink changes into a source and you end up with more net flux of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which, which helps to amplify 
the climate crisis, which is already being driven primarily by fossil fuel burning. And that's why we look at places like the Arctic. So I'd also like to call your attention to some science. I'm going to look at skeptical science here for a second. And the most widely accepted science on the issue of permafrost carbon feedback was written in 2015 by by a scientist called Dr. Schur. And Dr. Schur noted that between 50 and 250 gigatons of carbon could feed back into the Earth's atmosphere from permafrost based on how much the Earth warms, with an average rate of around 92 billion tons. Now that's less than one-tenth of the potential emission from human-based fossil fuel burning if fossil fuel burning just continued at the present rate for 100 years. So that just gives you an example of, of the size of the issue, additive, concerning, but, but certainly not the primary driver. So now a new study was produced by Esprit Smith on in, back in July, which, which was publicized in NASA's Global Climate Change JP, NASA's Jet Propulsion Labor, Laboratory, which produces uh, vital signs of the, of the planet, I'm sorry, vital signs of the planet, which produced a press release from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory about the new study. And the new study basically found that as Alaska has been observed to warm, the permafrost zones have become more characteristic of temperate zones and release more carbon into the atmosphere and and overall the, the carbon cycle between the land and the air has sped up and that the net change has been about 13 percent in this region and here is here is an image used to illustrate how the land has visibly changed and of course these visible changes to the land also are a metaphor for, for the, the changes in the carbon cycle that are ongoing. So I, I encourage you to take a look at this vital signs page that NASA produces. It's, it's one of the key public facing aspects of NASA's Earth observation and climate change signals page. And I also encourage you to take a look at the new study entitled Accelerating Rates of Arctic Carbon Cycling Revealed by Long-Term Atmospheric CO2 Measurements. And now finally, I'd just like to add this statement from Peter Gleick. And he notes that the delays of the past 40 years have committed the planet to unprecedented changes and will impose severe costs on all of us. It is absolutely not too late to slow the rate of climate change to accelerate the transition to renewable energy. So, so a clear signal in the Arctic right now that some of the unprecedented changes that, that scientists are observing are ongoing and they are accelerating. But just to add a context so that you understand what's going on and don't fall into the trap of the fifth stage of climate change denial, there are still things that we can do, and the primary driver of the crisis is human-based fossil fuel burning. And if we slow that down, what that means is that less of the Arctic is converted into a more rapid carbon cycle, as we have already observed some regions of the Arctic being converted, and less feedback carbon is released into the atmosphere, and the less of a, of a heating overhang we we produce for ourselves, putting our, ourselves in the position of, of attempting to remove more and more carbon from the Earth's atmosphere, which is a lot more difficult than transitioning to renewable energy. So thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.